Okay. So hi, I'm Maria bennett Hawk. I'm here with my WAM buddies, uh, Carrie Waller and Deborah Kearse, and we're going to do some demos for you. 15, um, 15 minutes each, I'm going to start. And uh, I just did a um, 45 and 45 of uh, um, essential workers at um, Duke University Hospital. So I want to show you my book. The link to the book will be in the uh, comments. And I was just going to show you a little bit about it, a couple of... Uh, couple of my favorite paintings that are in it. These are all essential workers and they'll, they'll, um, they'll get these, these um, paintings when they're on display now at Duke University Hospital. And on March 10th, I go in for just a little meet and greet, very safe meet and greet, of course, because it's at a hospital and I will um, give them their portraits. So I'm pretty excited about it. Such a cool so, project, Maria. Pardon me? Yeah. Such a cool project. Thank you. And I was gonna show you a little bit how I did it since I had to do the paintings in um, 45 days. So I did one a day. I'll show you how my, my process. I take a, a source photo. I usually use my computer. I use source photo that's the same size as my panel that I'm working on. I use gesso boards here. And uh, so I, I don't have to worry about sizing things. And I use a caliper. I use a caliper, and I that way I can I can measure distances. See, I can go in here. I can measure this distance with this distance here, with the distance on the. Uh, let's see, I'm not doing what I'm doing. This distance here, and then on here it would be the same distance. So, so uh, so that's what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to take this back where it belongs. And also when I, um, you can see, I can go straight across and know where the eye is, which really helps me out a lot. It really makes things go a lot more quickly. So I am going to start painting now. Usually I start with a little bit of um, burnt sienna and I'll put a little bit of orange on this, um, cadmium orange, just because I want things to show up. And um, usually I, you know, I can usually see it, but for, uh, for um, the benefit of the audience, I will go ahead and do it this way. And then I just kind of sketch in. I can, you can see my hat. I'm wearing the same hat today. Love my hats. If so have, can I just interrupt for a second? Maria? If we uh -huh. have audience, we are excited to have you here. Thank you so much. And what we're doing is we're recording this, but then we're going to be live when we post it for 45 minutes answering um, comments. And we'll also be answering them as you leave them, even if you don't catch us live. So please, please, if you have any questions or comments, leave. leave um, yeah, we, yeah, we will be available and we will answer all questions. No question will go unanswered. And uh, I, I, I also, I mean, you could probably see on here that I also do a, um, just a, a line down the middle and a line this way. It's, it's a, an eight inch square. So I do just a four inch mark. I just do a, a crosshair just so I can, keep an idea of where everything goes. Because sometimes I think I know where things go and I'm wrong. So, so and on this, I also have the, on my, uh, so I know this eye is gonna go about right here. In case you don't know, cause you're new to watching us, but Maria works in oil paint and she is painting a la prima, which means wet on wet. Yeah. I paint, I, even though it's a la prima, I still do um, layers. And the first layer is always very, very thin. And then I build them up. And when I start with um, darks and then work towards my lights, the, um, the lights will get very, very light. I mean, very, very thick. So I've done demos before, but I've never talked during a demo. So it's, it's hard to talk and paint. <laughs> That's why I'm it's a lesson. I'm trying to give you a chance to breathe. Like, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. And we want you to chew gum too now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a challenge. And rub your tummy and pat your head. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was I was talking. I was one of the ladies on on uh, um, one of the comments on on a one of my paintings. I said we were doing this demo, and I said it was going to be on Monday night, and Bridget. I can't think of Bridget's last name now. It starts with a W, you know it. Wheatless Buck. Yeah. And uh, she said, oh, I thought it was going to be Tuesday. And I said, Bridget, you are right. 
Thank you for correcting me. I started to intervene, but with my time zone difference, I'm like, I could be way off. So I'll let somebody else answer yeah. that one. <laughs> so uh, what I liked about this, uh, I always like to find something I, I really like about um, a um, portrait that I'm doing. And I like that my, my mouth is crooked there. So. You like crooked parts? I like something unusual. I don't like everything to be too perfect. I don't like it to be too symmetrical. I like it to be a little, little wonky. That explains why she hangs out with you, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Deb. <laughs> we are like siblings. Yes, we are. <laughs> I have the best time with these girls. That's why we thought it would be fun to paint together and show you guys how we interact normally. Yep. Now I'm just trying to get, get the angle right. You can see on my source photo here, the angle of my eyes goes just like this. So I'm gonna hold the paintbrush in front of my painting here, here, and here. So the eyes, the nose, and the mouth are all at the same angle. And then I'm gonna put probably a pretty good line there. So that was kind of like that. And I'm gonna put a pretty good line there because I can just paint over it. Do you have any crooked parts you wanna to admit to, Maria? I know portrait artists always notice those things like one eye is bigger than the other or one eyebrow is. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I just know when I do um, portraits, I like something to be unusual. So, and then once I kind of get the drawing down, kind of like, I kind of like, and I can see that, you know, the eyes are going to go there, the nose is going to finish right here, and then the mouth is going to go there. Then I decide to start putting in um, darks and um, and you can see from my source that the darks are not that dark. So I'm gonna exaggerate them because I like there to be a nice difference. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna again and just a touch of um, um, ultramarine blue. And, just, and then just a touch of cerulean blue. And it's gonna look really dark to begin with. Actually on the black background, it might look, not look as dark as the as I want it to, but it's gonna be fine. That's what I always tell myself, it's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Sometimes we call Maria when things go crazy in our lives and go, Maria, say it. <laughs> <laughs> and I do tell them it's gonna be fine. So I'll go down and a lot of times I just put the whole shadow in like this. And some of that background can, can show through because it's, uh, it's dark. So, you know, I'm not real worried about that. So it's just all dark on the, this, on the, um, the right hand side of the, uh, the canvas. So, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of that and I'm gonna add just a little bit of um, um, this CAD red light to it because I have a lot of red in my face. And so I know when I was young, I used to blush a lot and now I, uh, they call it rosacea. When I was young, it was cute. Not <laughs> cute anymore, yeah. So let's see, isn't that cute? She's blushing. Now they say, oh, what's wrong? Your face is red. So. Used to uh, be hot flashes too. They would say, oh, you're hot flashing. Yep. Yeah. So. Okay, and then I'm going to start putting in some lights. I think I'm going to darken up that one line there first. Good thing about an older face is the um, there's quite a road map on your face. You know where all the lines are. All the lines lead to, lead to a good portrait. So. You hear what she just said there, people? The good thing about an older face. <laughs> So funny when I'm talking to someone, sometimes I'll say, you know, and I have to be careful when I say it because some people I love to paint. And, uh, and sometimes I say, well, you know, really attractive people aren't as much fun to paint because this, everything's perfect. And you like, I like a more unusual face, but you have to be careful who you say that to. So some people do not think it's funny. I think unusual right after you're like face. I love painting your face yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
you know, I don't know if you can see it or not, but as I'm painting, I can see it start to emerge. Once I can see it start to emerge, I, I, I'm happy. I can see that I, I think I have things in the right place. And uh, so, and like I say, after, uh, after I get this initial block in, then the paint will start getting thicker. Someone else will be talking by then, but you'll see it start getting thicker and, uh, and hopefully it will look minutes. like me. Yeah. Three more minutes, Maria. Oh, three more minutes. How time flies when you're having fun. Um, Carrie, your camera is. I know. Oh, okay. I just fixed it. I uh, we have screen time allotments on all of our devices for the kids, and mine. I just got uh, screen time out. That's funny. <laughs> Those are things I didn't have to worry about when I had kids. Yeah. But you had told me it was going to happen in five minutes, and I was like, "Oh, there's nothing I could do. Just wait for it to happen." Yeah. You guys don't abuse their screen time, though, do they? They don't like. Oh, they would. Yeah, they absolutely would. they would. Oh, okay. Now you can see I'm starting to put in some of this light here, but you can see it's still really, really uh, thin paint. I just want to make sure before I start really piling it on, I want to make sure I have everything in the right place. You have to realize, Deb, at our house, we don't have cable or anything, so everything is screen time. If they want to watch Netflix or Hulu or... Oh, okay. oh. I thought when I think of screen time, I just think of, you know, computer games. I don't think mm -mm. Of... Or, you know, school stuff. Like, I can't imagine wanting to go, I gotta get back out there and do my assignment. Mm. So I'm just mixing, I'm using basically the same colors. I mix some, just some white into the burnt sienna to uh, get my lighter color there. And then um, I'm gonna take some of the, the darker one and just do the, this side of the face here, just to kind of make that definition. So it doesn't quite look so flat. A lot of times I'll get a little bit of a blue, like cerulean blue, and just do a light cerulean blue there, just to give it a little bit of a dimension. I'll make that wrap up, Maria. Um, you've got like one minute, then um, Carrie can talk. Okay, I'm just going to tell you that I just I like to make my face probably thinner than it is, because who doesn't? So I might bring it in a little bit, but uh, but the whole time I'm I'm looking at my source and I'm just uh, just paying attention to what's going on here. So. And the glasses, I usually paint last. Sometimes I put them on as I'm going, but usually I paint them last. So, get a little bit lighter there and here. Someone wants an introduction. Okay. Yeah. Moose, Moose is talking. He's, he's saying, is it Carrie's turn? Is it Carrie's turn? <laughs> I'm hoping I get to see Moose again one day. He's so old. And then usually there's a little bit of blue around the eyes. The skin gets, it's thinner. And so uh, I do try to exaggerate that a little bit because you can always knock it back down if it gets too blue. So I don't really worry about it too much. Don't worry about anything too much because it's oil paint and it, it can change, it can be changed so easily. So, how am I doing with time now? You're, you're done. Okay, Carrie, take it away. I may have to get up in a second. I'll let Moose back in. But I'm working on my nice thing is everybody's going to keep painting, so we can circle back at the end and have any final remarks, I guess. Um, yeah. I'm working on a, this is a pretty big paint, if you can see my hand. These are my 
cherries. I'll move my paper towel for a second. So I'm painting three jars of cherries and they're backlit. If you can kind of see on the ones that I've already finished, um, these two jars are pretty much done and I have the backlight coming in through there. So they're gonna be pretty dramatic because I'm gonna be putting in a dark background all the way across the back. So I paint in watercolor, um, different from Maria. So I'm doing some glazes today. Um, I've already got some of my initial washes down on this last bottle of cherries and I'm just going back in and, and doing glazes. Red is one of those colors in watercolor it takes a while. I don't know in, in oil you guys would have to tell me but in watercolor it takes a while to get it to the right value. Um, so I start with a, an initial wash of yellow um, like a lemony yellow. This is actually bismuth vanadate yellow. It's a Daniel Smith color and I did a um, glaze wash first of that yellow and then I glaze on top of that with pyro orange and then um, Caroline Red. And these are all Daniel Smith colors. And I'm just building up and building up and building up until I get my values right. And I like to paint almost in like puzzle piece fashion, um, one section at a time. And I establish my values right from the beginning. Um, not all watercolor artists do that. Some paint everything and, you know, the work on the entire piece at one time and build up values gradually. But for me, that gets a little, harder and confusing and you can get to an adolescent stage in a painting where everything's not quite done and you can abandon your painting quicker. So the way I learned to paint or the way I've adapted to my style to paint, I, I just finish a section at a time, get my values exactly where I want to. That's why I've thrown in my dark background up here in this right, up here in the top right. And I like to start from the right and work to the left. And I'm not left-handed, I'm right-handed. And that's just how I did it. And I didn't realize I painted that way until I started taking work in progress photos, which I encourage any everybody to take work in progress photos and videos and actually talk your process while you're painting. It, it kind of teaches you a little bit about how you do things. It wasn't until I started teaching workshops quite a bit that you start to realize kind of you can start to verbalize a step process and how you paint. So it's kind of beneficial. But I'm building up these layers. Like I said, I started with the bismuth vanadate yellow, which is that lemony yellow right there. And I started with a wash of that. You can see one of those layers right under there. And now I'm just building up these reflections in this glass bottle of cherries. So I'll be going in now with my Paraline Red right up here. And it's got a little light layer of pyrrole. And I'm just trying to tone down this reflection that's up here in the glass. And I. I have a lot of workshops that I've been teaching and most people want to learn how to paint glass for me. And it's all about building up layers, having a lot of reflections. One thing that you do in watercolor that is a little different um, from oil or acrylic is we can use masking fluid. Masking fluid comes in a jar and it's basically liquid latex and you apply it in various forms. I use a ruling pen, which is kind of, um, this is what a ruling pen looks like. Get yeah, closer to the camera. And it's almost like a pair of tweezers, what it looks like almost. You fill in the, the reservoir, you can do ink or watercolor or masking fluid. And then you can use this to apply very small, um, dots of masking fluid. And what the masking fluid does is it, once it dries, it stays on there. I've got some in different locations here. I've pulled it over here, but it's on right here. And once it dries, it stays on there. And then when I paint, it's going to reserve those whites in my paper. I'm going to have to go let moose in for a second. Let somebody else talk for a minute while I let moose well, in. I was going to say, well, when um, you talked about your ruling pen, I went and bought one. Um, it takes a while to get used to using it. And I'm definitely no expert. So it does to, take a minute. It does. I tried you know, to use a strip that I put in a recent painting that I had. And I'm like, I tried and I tried. I spent a whole afternoon trying to do the script. And I actually liked the way it worked out because it was so blotchy with the ruling pen. Like it was thick and thin and thick and thin just because of my lack of knowing how to use it. Um, so then I went ahead and redid it or retouched everything with uh I basically redid the thing four times because <laughs> I um to get it the way I want it but I kind of liked that it looked all rustic and uneven but um 
I, it just taught me the lesson that you can't just jump in and use the ruling pen. You got to kind of practice. That up. is a very valid point because I actually, when I was introduced to the ruling pen, I was in college and I started um, in graphic design at the University of Illinois in Chicago. And I had a teacher that made you go back and learn like the old school, you know, not the computer methods of graphic design, but like the, the way he learned. And so he had us learn how to use a ruling pen. And we spent an entire semester just drawing lines. Um, so kind of like graphic and you had to come up with a composition, but it was all lines. So patterns and lines, but the whole idea was that entire semester was spent trying to have a line that was even from start to finish on your page. You didn't have ink thicker anywhere else using a ruling pen. Yeah, so uh, I feel better that it took you a whole semester to figure it out because I definitely couldn't do it in one afternoon. <laughs> I do have to remember that when I recommend it to people. <laughs> it takes, there's a learning curve to it. I am glazing on top right now with opera pink, which is a really neon pink color. And I'm glazing on top of things because it makes everything pop out. I learned early on, as you can see on this chair, I'm gonna glaze right now with the opera pink. If you glaze over the reds and watercolor with the bright orange or bright pink, it helps pop it out to make kind of that cherry red color. Reds are a little more difficult and watercolor. Greens can be difficult too. I don't have too much trouble with greens, but to get reds where you want them, it takes a little bit of time in glazing. It's kind of just the opposite in, in uh, oils. Some people, and that means I will be using. What's that? No, what'd you say? Oh, I was just going to say um, it's just kind of the opposite in, or different in, in um, oils because some people will pull their. Um, they'll put their opaque light colors down and then put their transparency on top and then pull to get that translucency that you're talking about, that brightness, that's how they'll, they'll mm -hmm. So it's a different, um, it's interesting to hear you talk about the watercolor because it's different. Kind of backwards, right? Well, everything in watercolor feels, to me, feels backwards because I'm not a watercolorist, but um, mm -hmm. that one, it's kind of like you're, you're actually doing the mixing on your, um, canvas people that are good at it you can watch and I do do that I should talk a little bit about how I do my thing so I have my own I make my own pans so I have these little containers and I put my paint in each of these little sections and it's kind of like a little pill box um, but these I actually get at the hardware store they do have them on Amazon and um, I put make my own pans and I used to do these and I had these little containers I don't have one handy but they were little bead containers and I had each individual color separate but then when I saw these containers, I liked the idea of having the whole family of colors next to each other. So when you make your own pans, you do have to let the, water, the paint dry. Um, if you put the lid on with wet paint, it will mold. So you let it dry. I paint with dry paint. Some people paint with fresh paint every time. Some people activate their paint before they start. I don't. Um, I just paint with dry paint and I'll add a little water from my container when I start, but it, I don't go out of my way to wake them up as some people say. But um, I also adapted to now, I don't use a palette. I just mix all my mixing on my paper. Um, I did that just because I was getting a little overwhelmed. I had a lot of palettes and I didn't want to throw any of my colors away or wipe them out. And I started to have stacks and stacks of palettes and I was getting a little overwhelmed. So I just adapted my process. Plus, I don't know, spend a lot of time. I feel like the mixes are fresher, brighter, more saturated if I mix on the paper instead of in my palette. But that's just me, you know, it's kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You know, everybody's got a different method. One's too soft for someone, one's too, or too hot, too cool, whatever. So you have to decide your process and your method. This is just what I've adapted to. Plus, they're all exciting, but I feel like I only have one lifetime. I want to get good at one thing, you know? So it's like, I hear you talk and I want to go off and do watercolor, but I got to go, no, no, Deb, stick with the, you know? <laughs> I know. So you get better at this. Brian's always saying, stay in your own lane. <laughs> like, that's true. Get, try to, try to master one thing, right? <laughs> That's how I feel for sure. 
You've got about five minutes, Carrie. Okay. okay. Tell me. <laughs> I was going to show, I was going to show on these lids, um, I will be using my ruling pen for lettering. So it's hard, you may not be able to sell, tell because it's a small little screen you're seeing, but up here, the lid of these cherries says may contain pits. And what I liked about this painting in the backlit, backlit cherries, it, it kind of resonated with me right now with 2020, 2021, and the pandemic, you know, life is kind of a bowl of cherries or a jar of cherries, but it may contain pits. So you got the good, you got the good and the bad. So I really liked that it had that little saying on the lid is kind of a little subtle nod to how I feel about right now. <laughs> so <laughs> that I will be using and I have some of my letters done over here. I've got to go back and fix them so they're a little more even. I'm a little OCD, so I'm very perfectionist and I paint in a very realistic way and I don't think that will ever change because that's just my personality. But I do use my ruling pen for the letters and you just mix up a consistency. And the way I apply the paint to when I do that is I will literally get kind of like the consistency of an ink. If you had a jar of ink and then I fill up by taking the side of my paintbrush and filling and loading up my ruling pen. And that's how I load my ruling pen with paint. And then I'm able to adjust how thin or thick you want your line and use it that way. And I do sign my paintings with the ruling pen as well sometimes. But I have the wrong color in there or I would so do, do you, that for do, you. You use it for masking fluid you use it for signing these are for lettering on my paintings i use it for straight lines oh my goodness if you have a straight line you can use a ruler that is ideal so it's kind of almost like a pencil drawing at that point right yeah except you can load it with you know watercolor or ink or whatever your masking fluid whatever you're using so to me it's very versatile very accurate. I would be, yes, very accurate. I would be lost without it. And I'm just going in now and getting these cherries in here to pop. Unfortunately, like this painting, I don't like to stop painting a painting. Once I started painting, I kind of binge paint until I'm done. And this painting, I started a while ago and I had to stop and I had taught some workshops in between, had some deadlines and commissions in between. So I had to put it away. So I had to kind of remember the colors I was using. I should have, you know, taken better notes, but I didn't. So I'm pretty intuitive with colors, but I had to remember all that and come back to it. So I don't like doing that. I've got one more painting like that right now, but I don't like to do that. I don't like to have more than one going at a time. Now, Deb, on the other hand, she'll have like 30 going at one time. Um, yeah, I've got one, two, Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Right now, and, and yeah, <laughs> oh. it doesn't even count the eight um, portraits. Seventeen plus eight, twenty-five. No way, Jose. Well, I don't have that many going, but I like to have two or three going. Usually, I finish if they're big. I I can't finish it in one sitting, but if they're small, I like to finish it in one sitting. So I don't, I don't know what that would be like. All my paintings are like. 40 hours later. Yeah, I have never even counted how many hours on a painting. I haven't either. Some people I think that were in the design field like graphic design or uh, they, they got used to clocking their hours that they worked and they're good at tracking. I always thought that would make me depressed. <laughs> Plus, I don't see any point in it because it could take me, you know, half the time on one piece and then you know, double the time on another, like there's no logic depending on, you know, square inches or like, what do you want to tie that to, you know, a price yeah. or like, there's no, there's no, no logical connection between how long it takes me and anything else. So I know I don't either. And, you know, now if I record myself painting, I kind of have a decent idea of how long it took, but I do spend quite a bit of time watching paint dry literally. I do those 15 minute sketches every day and I've gotten good at knowing when 15 minutes ends and it's kind of weird how sometimes I can spend 15 minutes on one stupid tree branch and then other times I can get like almost an entire portrait done 
you know, yeah. high level. And it just is bizarre to me how sometimes I can work faster than others. I don't well, know. I, just I, think, I think we're sometimes more productive. I know I definitely have days where I'm super productive and other days where it's just dragging. I can't get in the zone. Yeah. I'm most productive in the morning. In the evening, this is hard for me. I can't get productive until four o'clock at least. And then it's like time to get dinner going and kit, you know, homework. It's like the wor- the least awesome time. I find for art me. is such a um, decision-making, you know, process that depending on what else is going on in my life, I make decisions quicker and easier. And that's probably, you're probably right. It's probably why, because if there's a lot of other things on my mind, I can't work as, as quickly, I don't think. Mm-hmm. But I try. Many factors. But you know, they do say that it is kind of a practice. I think like anything that that getting in the zone, it's kind of like meditation or you know, anything like that. And you have to sometimes force yourself there. I think you you fight it sometimes, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes you just have to sit down and force yourself into it, even if you have one hour to paint. Well, we said we were going to do 15 minutes each for this um, first little experimental, in a way, because <laughs> we're all learning mm-hmm. technology paint along that we're doing. And so it would technically be my turn. But if you okay. and Maria want to talk uh, too, I mean, you guys, I don't need my whole 15 minutes for anything or whatever. I, I figured finish. at the end, if we wanted to do uh, any last remarks about what we've worked on today. Maria will be more dramatic than me. It's just me over here on cherries. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that what I'm working on is um, I've, I've got this really cool, I mean, biggest commission of my life that I'm so excited. I can like barely think of anything else going on where it's for a design firm that um, handpicked me out of the artists at Copley Society of Art. And it's for the Langham Hotel in Boston that is going to open in April but they're gonna open without my 11 pieces of art because like we were just saying, it takes me a while to paint these things. I can't just create them on a dime. So we just got to the point where we've signed off and, uh, and money is changing hands and, and all the contracts are in order. So I'm excited to finally be doing this thing that we've been talking about for two years, but I just literally this week got to learn um, all these things about the project, like, you know, what they want me to paint and, you know, how much I'm going to get paid for it and what sizes they want and all that. Well, they want this painting of mine to be repainted in a slightly different way that um, I did. It's called Manny Petty. And so it's this painting of a still life of a shoe form that my son gave me, Connor gave me for Christmas one year. And this, um, hand that I just, I think these hands that artists use to be, um, use as marquettes for, you know, setting up the lighting and everything for if it were a real person's hand. I just had that on my still life shelf and I thought it would look cool together and I called it Manny Petty. And so I did this in a five inch by seven inch painting and it sold. Mm -hmm. And now here we are years later and they want me to recreate this piece because these three miniatures are going to go in the bar area of the hotel and eight portraits that I'm doing that are 30 inches by 40 inches are gonna go in the main dining area of the hotel. And those are gonna be portraits of past Federal Reserve Bank of Boston presidents with my modern spin. It's an homage using the John Copley Singleton style of portraiture painting that he did, but um, you know, using also modern references and props and things like that. So it's gonna be a fun, creative thing to do but I want to get these miniatures done because they want them finished by March 15th. Since they're miniature, they figure I can just get these done real quick, right? And I'm like, guys. They don't get it. It takes just as long, people right? People don't realize, <laughs> yeah. They don't realize. That's like when I'm, I'm ask for... laying it down quick now, but I'm these are the beginning layers and there's a bunch more layers to come and the final layers are going to be under a magnifying glass. So anyway, it's um, February, mid-February and I'm working on this and I have to have them done in a month and it's gonna take me a while to, because I work in layers unlike Maria and I have to let everything dry and these are oil paints I'm working with so even with Alkid, um, you know the agents in the medium to make it dry faster I still have to I'm, I'm pushing it now you're you are the right one for the job though if anybody I call you the energizer bunny you can oh knock man. stuff out 
and I've been doing commissions for so long that I feel, I feel like, wow, they, do they even know that they picked the right person for this job? Because <laughs> I don't want to sound mean or like that I'm complaining at all. I'm not, I'm so excited to have this. Right. But the reason that I'm painting this in a five by seven format is because that was what my original was. However, when I finally saw the purchase order, like three days ago, it's five inches by five inches, this one. Uh -oh. That changes what it looks like. Five inches by five inches, that means I've, it's, it's gonna be a square, so it cuts off here. So that changes what this whole thing is gonna look like, right? So I have a feeling what they want is five by seven, but what they wrote is five, or five by five is what they wrote, but what they want is five by seven. So I'm trying to be as, you know, the mother of two Eagle Scouts, be prepared. I'm trying to be prepared and I'm trying to um, pull together both the five by five and the five by seven for them, as well as the two others that they want that are four by fours. And so I'm going to try and deliver all of these. And then if they don't want it in the five by seven, then I'll just have an extra painting to sell to somebody. But this is the kind of thing when you do commissions that, you know, like if it's in order to get it done per their time schedule, because they've got installers and these are going to a framer in West Virginia. And then, you know, so they've got their timeline. And I used to run design um, teams for pharma the pharmaceutical manufacturing teams that I ran when I was a biochemical engineer. I, you know, we were doing the same thing, working with A&E architecture and engineering firms. And we were, um, you know, trying to pull all this together on a, on a budget and in time and, so I understand what they're up against, but um, yeah, you can't just be like, I think the average person would probably just create the five by five and then they'd be like, no, we really wanted the other one. So we'll see how it all plays out. But that's what I'm working on right now is my five by seven that may or may not end up in the hands of, whoops, I don't know why I did that color, um, end up in the hands of the, uh, the Copley people and the design firm people. And then um, I'm delivering these in October, I should say. So anybody in the Boston area, I used to live there and I've got some friends there still. Carrie Lynn lives there and I'm hoping to see her and Patty Geckler, her next neighbor and other people that I know out that way. Um, Ann Buckholtz and Kim McDevitt and all these fun people who may or may not follow me on Facebook anymore. But um, if anybody's in the area and wants to have a coffee with me or something, then I'd love to meet up with you. I'm gonna also go back in the springtime and see when these are actually installed because I'm bringing them in October, my portraits, and then they're gonna be installed. And then I can go back and see them when they're actually up in the dining room, I'm hoping. But that's what I'm working on in layers. And after this layer, I've got probably another, oh, I don't know, five or so to lay down. There's probably, this is, this is about the, well, I didn't do anything on this shoe yet, but in the shadows, I think this is like the third or fourth layer I'm laying down. So it just depends on, I stop when I don't feel like I can add anything more to it, but sometimes I'll have 14 layers, sometimes I'll have five to seven. How long does it take for those layers to dry before you can work on them again? The lower layers are the faster drying ones. So usually I can work on them the next day. As we get further along, I start to sculpt the paint so I'm actually um, doing thicker applications and then it can be like a week per layer before it's dry. Some cases. No wonder you have like 17 going. I know, because you know, if you can't work on something, you're not gonna waste your day. You're gonna go work on something else, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly it. But it's everything about what I do is additive. It's. Um, you don't ever lose any information. So as I'm laying these colors down, I'm pushing them and then I'm pulling them. I'm pushing them down and I'm pulling them back off. And so you can see bits of the colors and the layers from below peeking through them. I don't ever cover anything totally up. Now, having said that, when I get to the end, certainly there's some areas that are totally opaque, but in the beginning stages like this, you can see right down to the drawing. And that's important because I, um, I know a lot of people like to do in oils, they like to do the closed grisaille, it's called, where you basically paint a monochromatic painting and then you layer on top of it. And 
that's great because you can, you know, get your values laid down and everything. But in my experience, what people do and what I do, if I try to do that, is I end up just basically wasting that layer because it all gets covered up with opaque paint in the end. And yeah. that drives me nuts because the engineer <laughs> in me is like, you don't do work that you then cover up. No, no, no. So no offense to anybody if that works for you and that's your process, that's great. But it's for like me- Goldilocks, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. I just can't bring myself to waste you know, my time and, well, for me, it would be a waste of time and energy to paint something that nobody will see unless they come in some conservator thinks it's a Rembrandt or something and then finds out, oh no, underneath all that mud was a Deborah Kears painting, Never mind. But in the meantime, <laughs> they get like out the, the microscope or whatever and see the, the multiple layers. That's the only way that anyone would probably ever look, but they would discover that I don't do the close Versailles. And with that, I've, we've only got, we promised people, well, actually, I don't know if we did promise people. We promised each other 15 minutes each, and I've just taken 10 minutes. So um, do we want to do our, we want to keep this at 45 when we post it? And I think 45 is good. Yeah, Unless so we have a lot more to say. Let's go love. around. We should say Maria is going to be the most dramatic here because she'll have the most finished. <laughs> When is our next, um, I don't have it in front of me. We have, each of us is going to take a turn doing this. So right now, Maria's the one who started this one. Yeah, this yeah, we stick, we're stick. we sticking to the Tuesdays, I think. So I'm on the 16th, I believe. And I'm the following Tuesday. So if you yeah. guys want to tune back in on Tuesday at, I think it's 9 a.m. for Carrie's Eastern Standard Time and yeah. then 7 p.m. for mine Eastern yeah. Standard Wednesday here for me. Wednesday morning. Yeah. That's when I dropped a brush. When we post all my excitement, I dropped a brush. Uh oh. I'll remember to put in the comments when our next one is. Our next two are because um, it's hard to keep track of the times. With Isn't it amazing how quick forty-five minutes passes? <laughs> I know. I, I, yeah, when I'm painting, it flies. I know. It flies. But I hope the people watching this, I hope we don't get a comment going, oh man, that was the longest 45 minutes ever. Like <laughs> well, with three people yeah. to watch, you would think it wouldn't be, but yeah, because you got I mean you've got three different, three different styles, three different everything here. So mm -hmm. I would hope. And that's what I love about our group is that none of us like our stuff looks good when we hang it together in shows. And we should say we've got three shows we're really excited for in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. The first is going to be in January at the mansion at Strathmore in Rockville, Maryland, Montgomery County. And then the second is going to be at the Waterworks Art Museum in June. And that is in Miles City, Montana, just two hours outside of Billings, just a short drive. And then the um, third one is going to be in November in um, Sydney, Montana at the Mondak Heritage Center. And all three of those, I'm going to be at them. So um, that's my plan. I Maria's plan on being at them. Yeah. And Carrie, well, Carrie's going to be in the middle of a move next year. So maybe. We should we think if, she, if she leaves Japan. Yeah. <laughs> you never know with we, the military. We've said we were moving for every year. Who knows? So we'll see what happens. The, mil oh. the military likes to keep us, hop keep us yeah. on our toes. And so if she doesn't, we'll be back to visit. Those who don't understand that the military, um, you know, they might say one thing and then move you someplace else last minute or whatever. They're probably wondering where you might end up, Carrie. Oh, who knows? There is no telling. We will not find out even a clue until a couple months before we move. So we were planning we were a, i should say a year ago we were in japan with care yeah yeah today exactly we were in kyoto a year ago today yeah we were in kyoto that was such a fun trip that was probably one of the last immersive cultural experiences for tourists yep. of things that they did i mean right after we yeah well we were on that trip literally in the hotels we went in with covid not really being i mean it was like barely beginning you know that cr the cruise ship had docked in yokohama and all that was going on 
So we were watching it, but it wasn't a thing yet. And while we were in Kyoto, our hotel went, they started putting signs up saying, uh, you know, we apologize, but we're going to be wearing masks. Um, you know, don't, it's not rude, but we're trying to protect everybody. So that's when they started wearing masks full time. Yeah. I mean, the Japanese wear masks a lot, but you know, customer service wise at hotels, they don't normally have masks on because they're serving you in the hotels. So they started posting the signs while we were at that hotel. Yep. And I was crazy and I had my Lysol. I just about killed Maria. Cause I was so, we didn't, <laughs> it's we fun. Didn't, like, like, <laughs> a little asphyxiation is good for you. <laughs> we didn't know. I mean, we were all about the, the Lysol and everything we could put our hands on to disinfect. Yep. They were saying, they didn't know if it was a virus or some other kind of a mutant. Oh my yep. God. Like they didn't know what they were dealing with. So we didn't, I mean, the information that was getting to us was pretty spotty. All we knew That's is it was true. bad. And here we are a year later and it's still bad. So. Yeah. It wasn't even a, a, a blip hardly on the news in the States at that time. Yeah. But you weren't crazy. You were just being responsible, I think. Yeah, I mean, we didn't know what we were dealing with. So I had my, we rode the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train. So I Lysoled us down, Lysoled our seats, Lysoled everything. We did. We did. <laughs> we did. It was all good. And we all That's when they ran, they were running out of masks. Remember that? Yeah. Here. Mem uh, yeah, I remember because you got them for us. Yeah, so I got I got masks, masks, but so then you can not even find them. You can find them all the time at 7-Elevens and everywhere here. And all of a sudden, they were just gone. And I was trying to buy them while I was at, because I was at Carrie's house for several weeks. So I was trying to buy them and have them delivered on my Amazon Prime. Like, you know, it doesn't really happen overnight there so much. But like, no. you know, before <laughs> I left to try and get masks so that we could wear and Murray and I could wear in the airplane ride home and stuff. And, I have to say, last time I advertised for Kim Metti's earrings, and um, she makes wonderful earrings. And today I have on um, this from, um, oh, what's the one in Miles City? Girl Ran Away with a Spoon. And she's, she's on Etsy, and um, she makes, um, she, you know, re repurposes the silver. So um, I, she's, a, she's a great shop to go to. Uh, Girl Ran Away with a Spoon on um, Etsy. Very nice lady too. We met her yes. down there and we're like, she's like, oh, you're the artist over at the Waterworks Art Museum. And we're like, yes, can you come? She's like, I have children and I have a job. I have a life. I'm sorry yeah. I can't come to your opening, but um, we like her anyway. <laughs> to come to our opening this time. So. Well, we Let's are. This um, is where, yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, I think it's time. And you can see I've got pretty much, I haven't finished all the fingers up here, but on mine, I've got pretty much the next layer down, meaning that I've covered everything with paint. So um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'll get out my magnifier and I'm gonna start to really put in some details. Right now it's just sort of at a loose, for me, loose stage. And I got mine to a good stage. I think I'll, uh, I'll probably revisit it and see if I should put any more detail in it. But I was happy. So, that oh, looks great. Yeah, you, you're you, perfect for these demos, Mary. You can fit, start and finish. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to say goodbye then, and we will see you next time. But but we will be live and making comments every time we post these. When so at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, we will be there with you, watch rewatching ourselves, mm -hmm. and seeing, you know all the mistakes and how goofy we look and stuff. And <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Bye bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye.